What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 14.4.1 to the public and this is going to be released to everybody. Of course, if you are on the beta, you're already you know, on 14.5, you're ahead of 14.4.1, so you will not get this update. But if you are not on a beta, you will get this update here, 14.4.1. And this comes a little over a month after the release of 14.4, which did have quite a few new features. So this update, of course, a point of a point update will not be near as feature packed, but we'll talk more about that later in this video, along with what to expect with 14.5 as well. And along with iOS 14.4.1, Apple also released iPadOS 14.4.1, watchOS 7.3.2, and macOS Big Sur 11.2.3. All of those were released today. But of course, in this video, we're going to be going over what's new in iOS and iPadOS 14.4.1. So starting off with the size of this update, you can see here it came in just under 150 megabytes on pretty much all devices that I installed this on. I'm going to be showing it here on my iPhone 12 Pro Max, but I did also install it on my iPad Pro 2020, my iPhone 10R, and also on my iPhone 10s max there and it's all similar in size now if we go over to the build number here so settings general about 14.4.1 you can see the build there is 18d61 and then if we look down a little bit further you will see that the modem firmware remains at 1.42.03 so if you were having cell connectivity issues or any issues related to the modem on 14.4 I would not expect a fix here in 14.4.1 because that modem firmware has not changed. So now what's new with iOS and iPadOS 14.4.1? And if you guys are familiar with iOS updates at all, you would know that when we have an update this small, you know, under 200 megabytes, you really should not be going into it expecting much, especially when Apple just says that this update provides important security updates and is recommended for all users. Anytime you see that, and of course it's a point of a point update, that is usually always going to be a bug fix only update. So I did look around the settings, I looked in the control center, I looked around in the music application, I looked a lot of places and compared 14.4.1 to 14.4, and I was not able to find anything new or changed. So it seems like the only thing changed in this update is going to be those security updates. And let me go ahead and show you guys what Apple has patched with this update. So if we head over to Apple's security page right here, where it shows their security updates, and we go down a little bit until we see iOS and iPadOS 14.4.1 right there. If we go ahead and click on that, you can see we get the about the security content of this update. And there's only one bug that has been fixed in this update, and it is a WebKit bug. So you can see there it's available for iPhone 6S and later, iPad Air 2 and later, iPad Mini 4 and later, and iPod Touch 7G. And you can see the impact there of this WebKit bug is that it processes maliciously crafted web content may lead to arbitrary code execution. And it shows the description as a memory corruption issue was addressed with improved validation. You can see the CVE right there as well. So that is a pretty major WebKit bug and vulnerability. So that has been addressed in 14.4.1 and iPadOS 14.4.1. And what's interesting is that this is also the exact same bug that was patched in watchOS and macOS as well. Both updates that came out today as well. The only thing changed in those is that it patches this exact same WebKit bug. So this WebKit bug was not just for iOS and iPadOS. It also carried over to the Apple Watch and to all Mac users. So Apple has addressed that. It must have been a pretty important bug for them to push out this update because I really didn't expect a 14.4.1 in general. Just because 14.5 is right around the corner, I didn't think Apple was going to release two public software release versions within you know a couple of weeks of each other but it appears that this was you know major enough for them to push out an update to everybody but as far as anything else goes like i said i did look around the software and i didn't find anything else new in 14.4.1 so this is going to be one of those quote unquote boring updates but it is an important update this is you know keeping your device secure especially when we're dealing with a webkit bug you want to make sure you are up to date so you are not vulnerable to something like that but if you guys want to see a lot of new features and changes coming in 14.5 i have been covering the betas here on my channel i would recommend going to check those out or coming back to my channel later this month most likely 14.5 will be released to the public 
at the end of March. So sometime before April, I would expect to see 14.5. And we have a lot of awesome new features in there, like being able to unlock your phone with a mask covering your face if you have an Apple Watch. We have a lot of changes to the music application, just a ton of changes in that update. So if you guys wanna see those, if you wanna sneak peek at those features, check out my beta coverage here on the channel or stay tuned later this month where I will release a final release video where I go over all of the new features and changes in 14.5. But once again, like I said, 14.4.1 is going to be a very minor update, very boring update, but one that I would recommend everybody install. Now, we did not get any Thing about the green tent bug. So this is a bug that's affecting a lot of iPhone 12 users specifically. So a lot of users are having a green tent, like when they lock their device or when they're in low light and playing a video, they have some green tent around the edges of their phone. That has not been addressed in this update, unfortunately. I would expect that to be fixed at least sometime soon, I would hope but we still have nothing from Apple just yet. And then some people are also having issues with a slight stutter on the home screen. However, I've not had any issues with going from one app back to the home screen at all. I mean, 14.4.1 feels very smooth to me. Now, as far as the performance goes in general, I would expect 14.4.1 to perform pretty much exactly the same as iOS 14.4. I mean, Apple didn't really change anything except for patch those security vulnerabilities. So I would not expect any change at all going from 14.4 to 14.4.1. Now I did run a Geekbench test and I got pretty much the exact same results. I'll just run another one right here since it has been a little bit since I've installed this, but you're gonna see very similar scores to 14.4 because there's not gonna be a major difference in the software at all to you know give you any type of performance boost. So you can see we got a 1596 on the single core and a 4207 on the multi-core. And you can compare that here to 1601 and 4218 on 14.4. So slightly lower on the Geekbench scores there, but of course those don't tell the full story. There's a lot that goes into those. But as far as performance, like I said, I'd expect the exact same as 14.4 and the same with battery life. I would not expect any difference in battery life. I know some people did have issues with battery drain, but I don't think that's necessarily a software issue for most people. Some people are having issues with software and it you know, can be solved by software, but I would you know, go out and bet that most people, it has nothing to do with the software, why their battery is draining. So I have battery tips videos for those people, but 14.4.1, again, I would not expect a change in either performance or battery life. Now, should you update to 14.4.1? And like I alluded to earlier, yes, I would definitely go ahead and update. It is a small update, but if you wanna keep your device as safe as possible, you need to update to 14.4.1. So now what's next for Apple? And the next thing is probably going to be iOS 14.5. And that is an update that is going to be massive. There are a ton of new features and changes in 14.5. Like I mentioned earlier, I have been covering the beta here on the channel. So if you wanna see those, you can. However, I would expect 14.5 to get released to the public, probably on the week of March 22nd, possibly on March 23rd. So there's rumor to be an Apple March event, a hardware event on the 23rd. So, you know, that would indicate that there is a possibility of a software being released after that event. So March 23rd is a rough, you know, guess of when we could see 14.5 released to the public. And that's only two weeks in between two public releases, which is kind of rare for Apple, but that's gonna be a big update and I cannot wait to bring you guys my coverage on 14.5. So definitely go ahead and stay tuned for that. So yeah, guys, there you have it. That is iOS 14.4.1 and iPadOS 14.4.1. Really not too big of an update, just some security patches. And of course we should see 14.5 relatively soon as well, most likely in March. But if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. You guys know I like to cover every update no matter how big or small they are. And also I did wanna point out that we did not get an update for iOS 12. So Apple does sometimes release iOS 12 updates for the older iPhones when they push out a security update for these but it has not been pushed out. So if you're on an iPhone 5S or an iPhone 6, you did not get an update today, but that could come out later this month when we get 14.5. So just stay tuned for that if you are one of those old device users. So I like to keep everybody included here on the channel. But anyways, guys, if you wanna see all those videos coming up, make sure to hit that subscribe button and I will see you soon.